everybody. So today is Saturday. That means it's time for our Jane Austen month. And this one is an unusual one for many reasons. First, it's audio only because I'm traveling this week and uh, we are. And so I'm so I don't have my studio, my normal place to record. And uh, so I'm trying something different this week. And you have to let me know what you think. It's also different because normally in this series, I just profile movies that I like, uh, and I don't really talk about movies that I don't like. Um, but uh, since we're covering all the Jane Austen films, it seemed appropriate to talk about the 2022 persuasion and why I think it it failed so kind of spectacularly, uh, what the problems were. If you've been following my uh, Jane Austen Month content here, you know I am not a traditionalist when it comes to adaptations. I am pretty forgiving, actually, uh, of different takes on stories. Uh, I even liked the Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. I have liked most of the modern adaptations. I did a Fence of Modern Persuasion with Alicia Witt. I enjoyed that. Uh, so... I am by no means a stickler that it has to be exactly the same as the book. But the problem with Persuasion 2022 is not only does it vary completely from the book, has almost nothing the same, is that it doesn't replace that uh, content from the book with something that's satisfying or that makes sense. And so it just ends up being very, very frustrating. Well, so let's talk about it. So this, like I said, was released in 2022, and it was directed by Carrie Cracknell. They, in this version, they present Anne Elliot as this rebellious, wine drunk, glib, sarcastic character, which is completely different than her character in the book. In the book, Anne Elliot is shy, is awkward is very uncomfortable around uh, other people, but she's very sweet and very kind. And so it makes her very likable. And I think part of the reason why people love Anne is that people can relate because there aren't that many heroines in literature that are more soft-spoken and sweet and kind. So many of the characters in literature are your Lizzie Bennets, uh, outspoken, uh, a little bit strong-willed, uh, big personality, uh, your Joe Marches, your Anne Shirley's, your characters like that. And uh, so you don't see characters like Anne that often. Uh, and again, it would be fine if they changed her character, but then they expect it to still fit in with the story and they don't change the story enough to make it work with this new version of her. It doesn't make any sense to have this version of Anne Elliot and her be persuaded against Marion Wentworth. It, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, and it, 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 it makes sense in the novel and in the other versions why she would be persuaded, why she would listen to these people because she is somebody who is timid and and uh, somewhat insecure because she is somebody who is persuadable and in this version she is not and so the whole thing just comes off as extremely extremely annoying and false and uh, and so when we have Wentworth come played by Cosmo Jarvis it's like why doesn't she just run away with him she is this high spirited you know, person. She is this rebellious person. It doesn't make any sense. And uh, so it, there's no sense of tension or, uh, or, or um, there's no sense of tension or nerves of what's going to happen between them because there's never any doubt of what she's going to do because she is this rebellious, sassy person. Um, and they don't have any chemistry, Dakota Johnson and Cosmo Jarvis, but they aren't allowed to really spend that much time together. Uh, we don't hardly get to know him at all. And uh, so then they also cast Henry Golding as Mr. Elliot. And so you think that he's going to be the villain because that's Mr. Elliot's role uh, in the book and in the other adaptations. But <laughs> they have him 
be the kind of give him a happy ending in this where he ends up marrying mrs clay and there's this whole voiceover of like sometimes people have to fight for their happy endings or or something like that which is just absolutely ridiculous and uh, if we're supposed to be glad that she's with wentworth instead of this guy that she has uh, kind of escaped the clutches of this guy why are we uh, why are we supposed to feel that way when she has spent practically as much time with them and they give this other guy the happy ending and it doesn't make any sense. And that's the problem with this movie. There's no tension because none of the characters' choices have any kind of weight or doubt to them. And uh, and we don't feel invested because they haven't built up the characters to any kind of... They, they haven't built up the characters to anything but complete cliches. And uh, if there's anything that Jane Austen does not do is write cliched characters her characters are nuanced and especially in persuasion they are so it it's very frustrating for those of us that love these characters to see this this bizarre morphing uh mutantizing of her characters and her work it's also a pretty sloppily made movie there's some nice moments of cinematography but but the costumes are a mess of modern and uh regency they look terrible uh pretty much all the other production aspects look really sloppy and uh, so yeah this is just a really bad production of this story and again it's not that it's uh non-traditional it's that then they don't replace those aspects with something else that's satisfying so it's just a mess it truly is a mess and uh, so i was bummed i was really looking forward to this i was pulling for it i thought oh come on y'all are being too hard on the trailer and uh, then it came out and everybody was right it was terrible one of the worst movies of that year and uh, very disappointing uh, all the attempts to break the fourth wall were really annoying and it just did not work as this version of Anne Elliot and Persuasion. It wasn't Persuasion. It was like some kind of morphed version of Pride and Prejudice, but not even that. Because we did not get to know Wentworth in this even close to as well as we need to get to know Darcy. So this is just weak. It is very, very very bad uh but uh, let me know what you think of this version i would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section or on twitter and check out all of my jane austen month reviews i would really appreciate it i hope you've enjoyed this year's version of jane austen month we'll be starting my classic musical month uh, next so i hope you enjoy that and uh, i hope you all are doing well and please like this video, please subscribe to the channel, and check out the patron group and merch store. I would really, really appreciate it. We have some Jane Austen-inspired merch in the merch store, so check that out. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye! <laughs>